It's been 40 years since Group C Racing was born. In the early 1980s, Group C quickly became one of the greatest eras in racing history where car factories built the fastest cars to ever run the legendary 24 Hours of Le Mans. The Group C class was designed by FIA for the WEC and Le Mans 24 Hours from 1982 to 1993. Its former sibling, the North American IMSA GTP series, shared similar rules to Group C. Group C was all about pure prototype cars with a minimum weight of 800 kilograms and a maximum fuel of 100 liters. It was a gas consumption series that offered a variety of big or small naturally aspirated and turbocharged engines and cars to compete for overall victory. This formula created a great variety of solutions that attracted many manufacturers to enter and provided what we call the golden era of racing. This is the story of Group C's Le Mans champions from five manufacturers that paved the way for the future sports prototype cars. Each of these cars had a different character and sound in terms of engines and testimonies of how they set the peak of endurance racing. Group C cars bore similarities to the great sports cars of the late 60s and early 70s Group 6 cars, like the Ferrari 512 and Porsche 917 when Group C replaced Group 6. Porsche was the first manufacturer to enter Group C, then they were followed by Jaguar, Mercedes, Mazda, Nissan, Peugeot, Toyota, etc. Both the 956 and 962C were arguably the most successful Porsche race cars ever made. They were derived from Porsche's 936 Group 6 car, but had a closed cockpit with a proven flat 6 turbocharged engine from its predecessor. The 962 became the GOAT in Group C, as the 935 did for Group 5. It outlived Group C for 10 years and dominated Le Mans for most of the 1980s until it was approved by the Dower team in 1994 and fed to the new GT1 class rules as a street going sports car, not a prototype. Priorly, the factory backed Porsche Works team already had winning records since 1970 and is number one in the world with the most overall Le Mans wins. Both the 956 and 962C were unlike any other prototype in Group C. They were the first Porsche prototypes to produce ground effect aerodynamics. They aimed to evolve as much downforce with way less drag, thanks to the seals and fenders to guide air underneath the car to stick on the ground. Porsche flooded Group C entry lists with factory backed cars and privateers such as Keemer, Dower, and Joyce Racing, and each team had success with both prototypes. Both cars brought home multiple wins for Porsche in Le Mans 24 Hours, Daytona 24 Hours, and Sebring 12 Hours. The famous Porsche drivers Jackie Ickax and Derek Bell were the GOAT for helping Porsche win the Le Mans 24 Hours from 1982 to 1987. The car was so dominant that other manufacturers weren't able to match its feats until the end of the 80s. The mixture of the flat 6 engine making over 600 horsepower with insane aerodynamics was way ahead of its time. Towards the end of its competitive life, the Porsche 962 won for the final time as late as 1994. By then, the ACO had moved on from Group C to launch the new GT1 class where several road legal variants of a racing car would have to be built. And so, the 962 was converted to a road car by several privateer teams. Porsche won everything until Jaguar suddenly killed them in 1988. Even then, Porsche's 962s remained durable and reliable top finishers until they weren't competitive anymore. Jaguar attempted to win Le Mans with a series of XJR prototypes. Jaguar returned to Le Mans in 1984 when Jaguar partnered up with the American Group 44 team who built a Group C car with a big V12 engine. However, they managed to finish the 1985 race, winning the GTP class. After the success of the Tom Walkershaw Racing Team, which dominated the European Touring Car Championship with the Jaguar XJS, TWR was given the task to win Le Mans for Jaguar with a purple silk cut sponsorship against Porsche and Mercedes. The cars that entered in 1986 and 1987 Le Mans were the XJR6 and XJR8, and both performed well but weren't too successful due to mechanical issues. However, the XJR8 was very successful in the 1987 WSC and won the overall title with 8 victories in 10 races. Its design was advanced to the XJR9 which was identical to the previous car, featuring a ridiculous 7 liter V12 engine based on that of the Jaguar XJS streetcar pushing over 700 horsepower. The higher pitch engine sound differentiates it from the flat 6 engine of the Porsche. 
The 7 liter naturally aspirated V12 was the largest engine ever in a Group C car, and what made the XJR9 LM special, it met with more success with 6 victories and won the 1988 WSC. At Le Mans, Jaguar had entered 5 cars, and early in the race, they proved to be even faster than Porsche being naturally aspirated. Can you imagine reaching top speeds of 245 miles per hour on the Maussan straight? It took 4 years for Jaguar to get the durability and reliability down packed to beat Porsche. Porsche was still able to match his pace hoping they will show Jaguar who was boss, while Sauber Mercedes withdrew the race due to blowouts. 2 of 5 Jaguars had to retire, while 3 of them went on to finish the race with issues between in 1st, 4th and 16th overall in the formation finish. The winning Jaguar driven by Jen Lemmers, Johnny Dumfries and Andy Wallace completed 394 laps. It was the first time that Jaguar won Le Mans in 1988 since 1957 with the winning D-Type. In 1989, this time it was Mercedes' turn to triumph at Le Mans. Four years prior, Mercedes partnered up with Sauber to create and evolve the C7 prototype for the C8. They initially ran the BMW inline 6 engine in the C7 while Mercedes was developing the production based 5 liter turbocharged V8 engine for the C8 to C11 chassis. Mercedes claimed the turbocharged V8 engine was making almost 800 horsepower when racing. The Sauber C9 was a legend in 1989, achieving great success for Mercedes Sauber. The C9 was an evolution of the C8, with a light monocoque chassis and many other improvements. The engine for the C9 was ready by Swiss engine expert Heine Mater. The turbochargers became more efficient and the rear deck and rear wing have been redesigned along with aerodynamic changes. These enhancements made the C9 become the world's most successful prototype race car using the traditional Mercedes Silver Arrows paint. The Sauber C9 was a dominant force in the 1989 WSC and won the title. At Le Mans, not only did it prove to be reliable, but one of the fastest prototypes reaching speeds up to 248 miles per hour on the long straight. This Mercedes C9 and the WM Pujo were so dangerously fast that both caused FIA to establish two chicanes on the Monson Strait in 1990 to increase safety and nerve speeds after reaching 250 miles per hour, plus lowering the odds of the cars flying off the ground over the humps and bumps of the straight. Sauber Mercedes claimed a 1-2 victory at Le Mans in 1989 in front of Porsche and Jaguar. The winning number 63 car was driven by Johan Maas, Manuel Reuters, and Stanley Dickens, who achieved 389 laps. This was Mercedes' first ever overall Le Mans victory. During the 1990 Le Mans 24 hours, Jaguar has done it again taking a 1-2 victory with an XJR12 which is identical to the XJR9 done by John Nielsen, Price Cobb, and Martin Brundai. In 1991, Mazda beat Mercedes and Jaguar to win at Le Mans, the first Japanese mark to ever win the 24 hours of Le Mans in history. The only rotary powered car to date to achieve the feat is the 787B, which was unlike any other machine for many reasons. The mighty 2.6 liter 4 rotor was so unique compared to ranging from flat 6s to V12 engines. It was very rev happy and had the loudest symphony buzz sound with 9000 RPM that it can hurt a human ear. That's what makes Mazda something special because it's just music and doesn't stop there. Mazda already knew their famous rotary engine would be banned for new regulations in 1992, so 1991 was their final chance to win with a rotary. To make it happen, Mazda determined that fuel efficiency and strength were essential by limiting the engine to 9000 RPM. They upgraded the intake system to optimize the engine power and torque for ranging RPM levels. The R26B 4 rotor proved faultless, extremely reliable and efficient and the performance of Mazda's engineering. There was no misfires, clutch issues and flywheel fragmentation when testing and racing. Mazda may haven't had the fastest car when racing, but the 787B proved to be the most reliable at Le Mans from start to finish. It started strong and slowly made up ground through the pack, outlasting 24 hours all day into night with no flaws when a crisis hit Peugeot, Jaguar and Mercedes ruining their chance for the win. From there, 
Mazda was at the top, with Johnny Herbert crossing the finish line with a two-lap advantage over the second-placed Jaguar to secure a shocking overall victory. It was all over the live news in Japan, and they've done it totally with a unique engine that won't ever be seen again from Le Mans most likely. It's forever a huge achievement for Mazda, and then they left Le Mans and Group C with a blast. By then, this is when the decline of Group C commenced. In 1992, the FIA organizers changed the regulations and banned turbo engines. Thus, it made the turbo Porsches and Nissans ineligible. Instead, the new rules pursued Formula 1 with the engine size limited to 3.5 liters naturally aspirated because the cars were getting too fast and too powerful. The manufacturers had to be forced to use F1 spec engines to compete in the C1 category and abandon their street car based engines like Jaguar's big V12s and Mercedes turbo V8s. As you can imagine, this wasn't cheap and was a mistake by the FIA due to only a few factory teams such as Peugeot and Toyota could afford to construct 3.5 liter V10 engines from scratch and for private and small teams it wasn't profitable leaving them out entirely. As a result the new rules forced major manufacturers to forfeit Group C like Jaguar, Mercedes, Mazda and Nissan after 1991 and 1992. Then Group C came to an end in 1993. Pujo arrived on the Group C scene at the end of the 1990 season. The initial version of the 905 from 1991 proved very successful in WSC, finishing second place overall behind Jaguar's XJR14. However, it suffered some performance and reliability issues at Le Mans, but was really fast and fragile at the same time. Pujo really stepped up his game for 1992 with the redesign on their 905 to be called the 905 EVO 1 outwardly similar but radically different in terms of new aerodynamics. Its 3.5 liter V10 redlines at a whopping 12,500 RPM and produces loud music to anyone's ears based on Formula 1. The new engines may have been pricey but they directed the way to the future and were awesome sounding. In 1992, Peugeot, Toyota and Mazda with 3.5 liter V10s were the last remaining factories to appear in Group C, and very few privateers had either the funds or didn't to take part. A lack of entries meant the 1993 WSC ceased to exist, and Le Mans saw just the strong battle between Peugeot and Toyota for the win, followed by Mazda struggling to match the pace because of the lack of funding. The Peugeot 905 showed strong reliability among Toyota and success, bringing two of the team's three cars home in first and third place overall for its money. Peugeot had begun to invest in developing the 905 EVO 2 to compete in the 1993 WSC, which however didn't happen. It appeared very futuristic and took things much, much further. The design focused on extreme downforce with the round nose, wide openings between the wheel arches, and greater aerodynamics from the EVO 1. The EVO 2 was nicknamed the Supercopter after the helicopter because of the design similarities. This car never competed because the EVO 1 was substantially quicker than the EVO 2 after doing testing. So in 1993, Peugeot continued using the EVO 1 to repeat the feat at Le Mans they were able to sweep the full podium for the last hurrah of Group C, and then Pujo pulled out of sports car racing to return focus on Formula 1 with a blast. To wrap up this video, these five legendary Group C cars were the pinnacle of the sport in their days, as far as dominating and each providing great distinct engine sounds and looks. Group C was just as popular as Formula 1, which was saying something. These brought a lot of drama and excitement on so many levels. Words can explain that history books do all the talking. Other than that, if you were alive to see and watch Group C racing, I would like to know from you guys what was it like from experience back then and I'll read your comments. I hope you guys really did sit back and relax and enjoy this amazing video. If you did, do not forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. It means so much to me and I enjoy doing these videos. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to AR for donating to my YouTube channel. And hey, AR, if you're watching this video right now, I just want to say a huge thanks and God bless you. Peace out. Stay safe. Chris the Radar, out.